Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of the Bloody Legends with Jai That Aussie Metal Guy and Jim Taylor. Make sure you're a bloody legend and hit that like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the great content from these bloody legends. Hey, how you all going? Cheers for joining us for another edition of the Bloody Legends with myself, Jai That Aussie Metal Guy and my awesome co-host, Jim Taylor. Today, we have an awesome legend. We have Brett Scallions to talk about his latest project, Radio Bot. Brett, thank you so awesome. very much for joining me, my friend. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. It's good to see you guys. Absolutely. Sir, good to see you. Absolutely great to see you, man. I've um, been a big fan of your music for a long, long time. Um, today we're talking about Radiobot, man. Tell us all about this project, dude. I'm keen keen to find out some more. You know, it's it's not fuel, that's for sure. I'll tell you that. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a... It's a project that myself and my my friends, uh, my partners, Billy, Billy Harvey and Eddie Wall, you know, we got together back in around 2016 and we wrote a, like three songs and had a blast writing the songs. And then our, 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 our lives took us over and we had to go off and do our other things that we were used to doing and making money at doing and and uh and we didn't get to do any uh, write any other songs and then covid happened and right. we were and, and when that happened everybody stopped so uh and then billy and and eddie and i reached out to each other about three months into covid and said guys are, are you guys bored <laughs> it's like you want to get back to doing this whole thing again and so we went from three songs to writing another 18 songs or so. And we just wrote that. We just, we were writing two or three songs a day, just hashing them out, you know, writing the songs. And then, uh, and then uh, myself and, and Billy and Eddie just kind of layering things as we were going and, and coming up with lyrics and melody ideas and things like that as they came to us and just having fun with it, you know, and, and, you know, it's like I said, it's not fuel for sure. It's it's more it's a it's a bluesy country, uh, mm. rock and roll, but it's all in there, you know. And I, one thing with me growing up in the Tennessee area and things like that, I just all those elements always touched uh, had a had a big impact on my life, you know. So it's kind of fun to be able to pull those out of me and use them. For once because i wasn't necessarily able to do that with fuels so exactly that's cool. and, and that's one good thing about this project for you guys and when you say billy and eddie billy harvey and eddie wall who are really amazing accomplished musicians in their own right but you guys get sure getting together and kind of creating that part of your life you know it was a great part of your life and you've done some amazing things but now is the time that you can it reached its point and now you're able to create create music and initially go in there and create music just for yourselves. It would have been a very cathartic sure. experience kind of just getting in there and kind of going, let's just play some music. Let's just get in there for a writing session and just have some fun with it and rediscover what we kind of enjoy about music. Yeah. You know, I've always been the type of person and the type of music lover and the music, music performer that I'm like, you know, I, I always want to be different. I always, I always want to push, I always want to push myself. I always want to be, I don't want to make the same piece of meat every time. I don't want to make the same cheeseburger. I don't want to make the same steak. I, I don't, I want to be different every time I make a record. I want it to be different than the last record I made. So, and, and I, and I absolutely love writing with different people. I, it, I would, I would much rather sit down with a couple of guys and write a song together than just me sitting in the room by myself trying to figure out what I want to do. You know, it's, it's so much more fun for me to be able to bounce off ideas from other people uh, with other people and things like that. It's just a fun environment. So I, that's the way I, my favorite way of writing and, uh, and working with music. So, and, you know, and, and with Billy and Eddie and myself, Eddie and I go way back. We've, We've done tons of stuff together. We we did a project called World Fire Brigade together, which with, is amazing, by the way. Thank you, great, thank you. Great, yeah. great, great record, Brett. Uh, thank great you, record. thank you. A lot of fun to make that record, and that was a full-on metal record. You know, it was heavy that, as hell. That record, 
yeah it was a very melodic metal type record and stuff and you know and now eddie and i are working with billy on this one and this is more completely different it's it's blues and it's country and it's rock and roll and stuff like that and it's just fun it's a lot of fun for us to be able to really branch out and expand ourselves and and uh, and push ourselves to be you know go into certain areas that maybe we're not comfortable uh haven't been comfortable writing with in the past but right. now we're ready to do that you know so beautiful beautiful yeah yeah it's good times man <laughs> that's awesome uh, well, uh yeah so you have about you said you have about 18 songs is that did i hear that correctly well somewhere between 18 and 20 songs so i, I haven't even counted lately <laughs> to be honest are we, with you. Are, i know are we looking at next year for a release the the plan is you know we're we're just releasing we just released a subterranean homesick blues which, which is awesome. uh yeah thank you which is uh you know us paying homage to to bob dylan amazing song i think it i i really think that that video that bob dylan i don't know if you ever saw the original version of the that ver that video that he did but I think that that had to have been one of the first. Sorry, Brett. Wasn't music he in videos. an alleyway or something like that? I do yeah. remember yeah. seeing that late one night, and he had the yeah. signs. I've, I've watched yours, and you're sitting across from the circus liquor right. place exactly. there. I'm not sure where that is, but it's, it's a pretty yeah. cool spot, man. Well, yeah, I you know I I watched uh, Bob Dylan's video, and I. I did every single board that he wrote out. I wrote my our boards out exactly like his, you know, and I spent like a few days just doing that. And um, I, so I wanted the boards to be exactly like Bob Dylan's boards. But at the same time, the version of the song that we did was very, very different from what Bob Dylan did. You know, we mm. kind of modernized it. So, you know, with the video, we wanted to make it... Uh, simple like he did but at the same time modernize it too and we were like hey you know we were we were just kind of running around los angeles and we we shot the video in numerous different locations but the only one that really made us look jumped out at us and made us feel like that's pretty fucking cool is when we did it in front of circus liquor so we just we we used that's that cool. the whole time so yeah it was fun I like at one Very point cool. when you're doing it, people are coming up and getting photos with their, their shopping and that at the landmark <laughs> as well. <laughs> you know, welcome to LA. You yeah, never it's got know Brett sitting across see. the road there and they're going over and getting photos with the circus liquor sign though. That's what I found funny. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey man. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, man. I know. Every everything in LA is like a uh, it's like a photo op, right? So uh <laughs> you gotta love it. So, uh, so working on this project, coming back together and doing it through COVID, what was that like for you guys? You know what I mean? Getting right. used to a lot of these and FaceTimes and being able to create music exactly. together, but across the fucking country. I, I, exactly. You know, and for me, uh, leading up to COVID, I, my mentality was always like, you got to be in a room, you've got to. You got to sit down and flesh through everything together. And we found, we figured out that that's not the case at all anymore. Not, not with modern technology. So, you know, Eddie and I were at his studio together in, in the Van Nuys area and Billy was in Nashville. So we would FaceTime with Nash with Billy in Nashville and, and all mm -hmm. the songs with, uh, with radio bot, all the songs, you know, start with a Billy riff. Yeah. So, we would be on a FaceTime with Billy and Billy would play some kind of crazy riff and we would go record that, record it right now, record it. So he yeah. would, he would throw, he would throw it down and then he would put it in a Dropbox and then we would dump it out of the Dropbox and put it in a session and uh, at Eddie's place. And then we would just kind of start arranging the song, you know, Eddie or Billy would play something else and send it to us and we would just kind of throw it together and as all that was happening, I would be coming up with a vocal melody or Eddie would come up with a, some kind of melody or whatever. And we were just kind of being creative that way. And even though we all three of us weren't in a room together, you know, so and then we would wow. uh, eventually. 
yeah, we would eventually get an arrangement together, uh, get it all the way to the end of the song. And, and then, uh, and then I would go, okay. And I would take the files back to my house and I might lay down a scratch bass track or something like that. And then I would sit there for a few hours, few days and play around on the drums and figure out how the, how the song's going to go, you know, and lay down some drum tracks. And then I would give it back to the guys and they would put their stuff down. It, the one thing about making a record like this was between the three of us, we never, we never knew what the other person was going to give back. So, so you know, it, every time it was kind of like a little Christmas present you were opening because you never, you knew, you knew what you worked on together the last time that you were together. But then you would right. give it to the other person and they and you'd go, OK, put it, put whatever you're going to put down on there. And then they would take a few days with the song and then go, OK, I've got something for you and send it back. And then we would listen back to it and go, whoa, OK, wow. I had no idea. I had no idea the song was going to go that way. So it was it was really fun in that way of writing, you know, to to just kind of sit back and wait a few days and see what the other person was going to do. And that's cool because it, it, it yields to not only creativity, but spontaneity. It's like, ah, I'm Absolutely. not sure what the hell they're going to do. So let's make this weird. <laughs> a abso <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you can in your mind while you're waiting to, to hear back on what uh, the other person did, you're kind of envisioning things. But then yeah. all of that all of that goes out the window as soon as you hear what they did. How you know? exciting is that, though? That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Really fun way to write. I, I'm, I'm digging. I, I like. I want to write all the records like that from now on. It's like, even if, yeah. even if we, even if we can be in the room together, I, I'm, I'm like, I just want to go. Okay, Billy, go home to Nashville, and <laughs> we'll, we're going to write the way we've always written from now on. Okay, because it's a lot of fun. It really is. You know, no and, and and and. Uh, and it's from a, you know, I've been in, in, I've been in writing environments where you're sitting there all together and people are saying, Hey, can you try this? Can you do that? Can you do this? Can you do that? You know, and everybody's yeah. brains start getting in there, you know, and yeah, yeah. You, you ultimately find good ideas and you all come to collectively come together and figure it out. But it's kind of fun to get rid of all of that sometimes too. Yeah. And the, the way we, and the way that we've been doing this with the radio bot stuff, the three of us have just been able to, to be on our own and, and do what we feel like is best in our heads to do and then send it to the other guy. And then they do what they feel like is best for in their head. And they, you know, and then once they get that done, they send it back and, we just kind of, like I said earlier, it's kind of like giving each other a little Christmas present every time, you know, when you when you send the song back. So it's kind of cool. Brilliant. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun, man. <laughs> Cheers to you guys, by the way. Cheers to you. Sir, <laughs> I want to do the same pyro right. of uh, death here that I made uh, years ago. So. <laughs> I'm uh, drinking Cabo style right now. So cheers to you. Uh, cheers, oh, brother. Thank you so much. Yes. So, so, cre so creating music like this for one, as I kind of touched on, has got to be kind of cathartic. And I can see now the excitement in your face and kind of having this passion again for, for, for music. You know what I mean? It's always been there, but being yeah. excited about doing this project, it's also got to be fun kind of making music together. Kind of, I know early in the early days, record companies and labels had such a fucking hold on what you do as a band and everything and now you're kind of able to move a little bit more independently and not have those labels kind of have the hold on you as an artist as mm. well and just be able to create music that you want to create and it, it excites you and then you're able to make it from home make a good fucking product as well and put it out there for, for people to listen to as well and it kind of cuts out that fucking influence and the toxic influence they'd have a good influence too but there's also a huge toxic influence that they did have on the industry yeah. as well yeah you know the industry itself you know they're they're not looking for good songs or great songs 
as much as they are looking for hit songs. Yes. They want they right. want hit songs. You know, and and I understand that. And then of course I want hit songs too. We always want hit songs. You know, for me I've always I've always mentally felt like, you know what? A hit song comes out of a great song. You know, and if you write an honest song and if it comes from the heart, comes from the mind, if you're not trying to if you're not trying to analyze things and you're not trying to analyze what was a hit for someone else, you know, mm. let's try to mimic that, you know, which a lot of writers do. A lot, a lot of bands, a lot of artists, they do that. They'll they'll go, what's the hot potato right now? You know, mm-hmm. and they'll try to and they'll try to go with they'll try to fall into that that road. You know, because that was the road that was a popular road. You know, and I've never, I've never been one of those people that likes to follow the same road. I, I always try to find my own road. You yeah. know, and and you know, it's like if if somebody's taking that big main road, I like to branch out and get off of it and try to beat them to the finish line, so to speak. So right, you know. So, but at the same time, for me, it's like. But within that, it's like I don't I never want to I never want to write what other people are writing, because what's the fun? What's the fun in that? You know, it's like I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be like me. You know, it's like and that's for me, all the great bands that really stand out and stand the test of time and have and and are unique and truly their own type of bands are the ones that don't look around. They don't look around to see what everybody else is doing. You know, they just write the songs that they feel good to them. They're not they're not writing songs for the sake of just trying to write a hit song. They're just trying to write fun, fucking great music that people are going to enjoy. Exactly. And then it be- oh, and yeah. then it becomes a hit on its own. Yeah, so it's, it's always it's always fun to to go on that journey. I do mention it a lot. Um, go on that journey with an artist, chuck on an album, and then you put on something different, and they've pushed themselves. We um had a chat with a guy yesterday. Uh, Matt Hanchuk, great musician, but he's always pushing and improving himself. He said every album, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to push myself a little bit more. And as a musician, creatively, that's the only way sure. you can kind of push yourself forward, isn't it? To try, kind of do something different. Look, it's good for ACDC. They can do fucking twenty albums of the same thing. I can say that I'm an Aussie. Sorry, AC. DC, I love you, but it's good for yeah. ACDC to do 20 albums of the same one. But it's also great when an artist can push himself musically and creatively. It's as a listener, it's a fucking joy to hear, too. Very, very true. You know, but then you all, like you said, ACDC, those guys can take four chords and they can write and make 500 it slam. songs. They can make, <laughs> yeah. they can write 500 songs out of those four chords. And slay your face off every <laughs> single time. Yes, and, sir. and and every every one of those songs is gonna sound similar but different. Right. And they're gonna have their own thing. They're they're gonna have their own unique qualities about them. So there are certain bands like that that can get away and do that thing, you know, but and it's amazing. And yeah. so I love. Uh, I'm I'm a huge ACDC fan. Oh, same man. I'm the an Aussie. They'd, they'd deport me if I wasn't. Same. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, get the fuck out of I Australia just, now. <laughs> right. I just saw. I just saw. Uh, I just saw ACDC at Power Trip. So. Oh wow! Yeah. I was oh, there. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I, I see this from real. I seen um King Parrot do a really cool cover of um mm-hmm. nervous breakdown that absolutely bloody ruled i love that's one of my mm. favorite sh- never shakedown that's one of my favorite songs man i love that track, uh, dude Dwarf beautiful. the early stuff man really really cool so what what's the plans going yeah. forward with radio bot are we gonna um couple more singles before the year or another single or you i know we got the two albums mm. how, how are we gonna yeah. release this because you've got to i know the way the industry the scene is these days is like release a couple of singles and I'll tell you that, but before we get to that, yep. I have since we're on ACDC, I have to say the most rock and roll song ever is Whole Lot of Rosie from ACDC. Oh God. Yes. Whole lot of Rosie. <laughs> whole lot of Rosie. It, like if you ask me, if you ask me what song is gonna make you hurt your neck, cr- crank <laughs> yeah. it and crank it up, it's Whole Lot of Rosie. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. That song. Yeah. 
Oh, that's it all. That. gets me yeah. every time. Yeah. It gets me. <laughs> yeah, that's a killer oh, yeah. one. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so anyway, to answer your question, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, to answer your question about Radiobot, uh, we just released uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues. We have uh, December 8th, we're going to release uh, a, a song called uh, This World's on Fire. And... Um, it's a it's a song that it's a song that uh, we wrote this time. You know, the first one, of course, Subterranean Homesick Blues is Bob Dylan. But uh, this world's on fire is the song that we wrote. And uh, it's it's got a little bit of the country blues and rock. And it's got comedy in the in the lyrics. It's tongue in cheek. You know, it, hell, this world literally is on fire right now. There's a lot of fucked up, crazy shit, you know, so uh this this song kind of i think will hopefully lighten things up a little bit because there is a lot of stress yeah. on uh on society right now i feel like with yes sir going into we're going into a political year we've got conflict between israel and palestine we've got uh you know, uh we've got all kinds of civil unrest here in our country and we've got the insanity at the border and we've got just all kinds of crazy mm -hmm. stuff going on. So, right. You know, I, I think with the, this song, this world's on fire, it's going to show a little, it's going to lighten things up a little bit when it comes with lyrically, you know, we've got some funny elements in there, but it's also tapping into um, some uh, things that we're all just kind of noticing and seeing and dealing with these days. And, you know, there. we we have a video. We we had a video uh, made for it that we're gonna release too. It's a it's an animated video, and uh, some uh, some good friends of ours who are animators in Israel they did the animation oh, for yeah. it, and it came out came out amazing. So I, we can't wait to show it to everyone. I'm a cartoon, so yeah so, so i i always wanted to be a cartoon so this is my chance i'm now <laughs> yes. a cartoon so but we've also with this too we've we've set this up too with these animators and uh you know we're going to release this video for uh, the song this world's on fire but we're setting it up too to where we're gonna we're, the plan is to sh uh, to shoot uh three four five other videos with uh, these same animators, oh hell yeah, uh, different different songs, and we want to take them all and kind of tie them together and make a good thirty minute um, little oh, like a short, short film. Oh wow, short film. That's short cool. Film out of it. So yeah, you know. So we've been setting that up. So yeah, that's and, really. And once you see that, once you see the video, hear the song, and things like that, you'll you'll start to understand that. So absolutely, uh, we uh, we and we have with this with the songs that the next songs that we want to release and everything, uh, we've kind of mentally we've got it all set up to where uh, it'll all tie together really fun and cool in a in a in a crazy way, and yeah. that you know the goal the goal for us is is just to be artistic, artistic, yeah. be creative, give you give yeah. you give you things give you things that are not just you know mindless dribble you know yeah. we, we want to give you we want to give you music and songs and lyrics that have something to say give you videos that have something to say um something things to look at things to make your mind move you know and it's not just it's not just some kind of stupid band performance video yeah, I oh, do. No, some not... of those animation videos are bloody unreal. It's funny you mentioned that because I've actually Killer. been watching a few of them. We interviewed Richard Patrick from Filter the other day as well. And I was watching yeah. that obliteration film clip they'd done. The animation one was really good for that. And then Caesar. Awesome. Done. Man, some of these animation film clips are really, really, really good to watch as a viewer as well. So I'm excited to have oh, a look yeah. at this one. I love it. Yeah, I love it, man. You know, the mind needs stimulation, and I I would much prefer give stimulating your mind with things that are that are going to feed you with good content versus just giving you some dribble of nonsense of bullshit that you know that's boring and not worth even looking at. You know, I'm not going to give you. Yeah, don't worry, yeah. I will never, I will no longer ever give you a performance type video. Okay, mm -hmm. 
It yeah. will never happen again. I've been there, done that yep. with fuel and things like that. So you're never going to see that again. Yeah. So don't worry. <laughs> That's good to be able to reach this point in your life where you can have that freedom to to create and express yourself as, as you like, you know, and not mm. be pressured by fucking society. You're just doing what is good for you. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, you know, earlier in the day, in the day with fuel and things like that too, there was, you know, there was the, the pressure of trying, we didn't know, yeah. honestly, we didn't know how to, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't Some know what we wanted. Man. Yeah. We didn't know with fuel, we didn't know what we wanted to do. And, you know, we were just trying to be, you know, just trying to be a band and trying to be successful and sell records. And, and we wanted to play in front of lots of people. That was the main goal. We didn't, you know, and, so, uh, but now I'm at a point to where I'm like, you know what? No, I, now I want to, with anything that I put out, I want it to say something. I want yep. it to be something. Cool. I want it to have meaning. I want the music to have something to say. I want the videos to have something for you to really look at and absorb, you know? And uh, I just don't want it to be something that's useless and and easily forgotten about, so... Exactly. I yeah. dare say that's a part, a big part of what kind of motivates and inspires you today compared Ooh. to what inspired you back when you were starting. You kind of hit the nail on the head there to be able to create music that means something, create stuff that means something and not that it did then, but for you, you know what I mean? It's a different type of feeling now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, you know, back in the day, our hair was just on fire. I'm running. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Now you're able yeah, to take it yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now it's, uh, yeah, it's all a little. And the kids are all a bit older too now, as you as you're saying before, and they're able to kind of see the performances that you are, and as an artist as well. And that's what we're. I've chatted to a few right. in the last um couple of weeks about this. Richard was talking about his kids, and then us chatting to Sadus and Darren was chatting about his kids coming along the performances. Now, what's that like as an artist now, and the kids being able to see you, and your 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 wife's an amazing artist as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's funny. How- it's funny how you know your the priorities shift. Yes, for sure. Yeah. you know, and uh, you know, I have my I have my two amazing boys and my wife, of course, like you had mentioned too. And you know, it's like uh, definitely the priority shift, and you know, it's it all everything revolves around them for yep. sure. You know, Beautiful. and and music and music and career and all of that comes secondary. Yep. You know, although you do still have to make it a major priority. But know? then the project and, like Radio Bot, you're able to work from home a lot more too. And that's probably what gives you a lot more joy as well. You create when you need, Jim, hit the, the spontaneity you said before, but being able to create when you are all ready to do it as well. Not, oh, we've got a studio. We've all got to go in here these fucking two, three days a week. And I, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. My days, my days of recording records are waking up at 6 30 in the morning getting my mm. kids ready getting them ready for school and all that you know getting Isn't that them out grounding? of the house that is so yeah. grounding i've got my kid in the next room <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, getting, I'm getting them ready i'm getting them out of the house and everything and by 8 30 or 9 o'clock i'm still in my pajamas and i'm going into my office and i'm and i'm turning on my rig and i'm getting ready for to, to have a session for the day you know and and then all day until three thirty, I'm either working on drums or bass or or guitar or doing vocals or whatever you know until they're done with school and then and then I put down the office and I walk away and I and then I deal with my kids and my wife and and, the, and, and everything else that's part of the family. So you know it's it's that's one thing that's fun to be able to to be a dad, be a family person, you know, family man. And um, and be able to work from home, be able to record on my own, you know, and and focus on like with the radio bot stuff, work on work on the parts that I need, send them to the other guys and let them work on it when they can, you know, but then also be a dad and be at home and throw it all to the side and focus on on the kids and and ask them about their day and learn about them and 
and things like that. So it's it's awesome. Right? It's the salad days, as they say, you know? It's everything. It's absolutely everything. It makes what life is all about at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Um, Jim, yeah, do you have anything sure. else? Cheers like to that. To, yeah. Do you have anything else to, yeah. like to add in, Jim? No, uh, no, that, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't, I don't okay. believe that. That was absolutely brilliant. Look, Brett, this has been an absolute, absolute pleasure, sure. mate. I'm hoping to have a chat with you next year when one of the albums drops. We can chat a little bit more about that. Till then, do you have any last words, shout outs, thank yous, or anything else you'd like to add in there, my friend? Man, you know, follow us on our on all of our socials on Facebook, on Instagram, and I believe uh, I don't do the TikTok thing personally, but I know that uh, Billy has set up a, the, a TikTok account, and you know, so mm. we're just we're just building all of our socials, building our sense of awareness, building our fan base, and it's trying to have a lot of fun, trying to have good times with everything. And we we don't take things serious; we take things in a fun way you know we try to we try to be creative and honest and have fun and have a good time and we don't want to we don't want to overthink we just want to have fun and write great music and perform great shows and have great songs and and uh and and have everybody join us in the ride you know so that's what it's all about have a good time and have fun in life exactly so, everybody yes, go sir. out there Check out some radio bot. The latest single is Subterranean Homesick Blues. Go crank that one up. December, keep your eyes and ears peeled. This world's on fire. We'll be dropping, as Brett said there. And keep tuned to radio bot. Crank them really loud. The neighbors are going to want to hear it as well. Cheers, Brett. Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers, too. Oi, you're tuned in to Dry That Aussie Metal Guy, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.